Welcome back to WrestleSpective, the channel that Pro Wrestling Illustrated gave 15 out of 15 smashed like buttons. Eric Bischoff has been getting a lot of attention on social media lately. EB has no doubt been extremely successful throughout his life. He's a hustler and I respect that. He went from the wrestling business to a successful TV producer pretty seamlessly. But early on in that transition, Eric didn't get too far away from wrestling. In fact, in 2001, he tried to help launch a wrestling show featuring a young roster, with the likes of TJ Wilson, Harry Smith, and Natty Neidhart. And I mean very young, like under 21, some under 18. This is the story of Matt Rats. Maybe I'm just getting old, but I feel like we're seeing some very good wrestlers at a very young age making a pretty big impact. Billy Starks, Nick Wayne, Marcus Mathers, Roxanne Perez, and Jordan Oliver are the first ones that come to mind. These talents as of this video, I believe, are all under 25. This certainly isn't new. There's always been talents that show an in-ring maturity beyond their years. Terry Gordy, Bobby Eaton, William Regal, and Davey Boy Smith most famously. I mean, the British Bulldog got that name Davy Boy at the start of his career on World of Sport, as young David. Later, David Boy Smith. He was a literal boy among men. When he grew up, Davy would marry into Calgary's Hart family. A family where all 12 children involved themselves in the wrestling business. All the boys would become wrestlers or referees, and all the girls would marry wrestlers. This Graps fairy tale would see a new generation of wrestling prodigies. Harry Smith, son of Diana Hart and Davy Boy Smith. Teddy Hart, son of Georgia Hart and wrestler BJ Annis. And Natty Neidhart, daughter of Ellie Hart and Jim the Anvil Neidhart. The Hart kids only knew wrestling. They had no way to avoid it even if they wanted to. So it's no surprise that the ones that would want to get into the business would do so as soon as they could. What is a surprise, though, is that in early 2001, someone would build a wrestling show around the Hart kids, and other teenagers. Who was that someone? Well, it could have been a few people. It may have been Bruce Hart's idea. I could see that being the case. It's a carny idea that seems like something Bruce would come up with. But if you believe Natty's telling of events, it was Eric Bischoff and his production partner Jason Hervey's idea. Full transparency, Bischoff has said that they went to a taping but never worked out a deal to distribute the show. But I've uncovered some press materials that dispute Eric's claim. Also, come on, there's footage of him with a mic in hand. I'd say he had more involvement than he seems to remember. And after WCW went out of business, you had some free time on your hands, and we've never really talked about this before, but you worked, maybe briefly, with a group out of Canada that was trying to get a program off the ground called Matt Rats. Can you talk to us about that and tell us what the gist was, what your role was, and ultimately why I didn't really get off the ground? Yeah. I mean, first of all, I didn't really have a role and I, I didn't really work with them. I was invited up there by the two principals and I can't even remember their names anymore. Uh, one of them was, his name was Graham, super good guy. So I went up and I took a look at it and, you know, we had talked about maybe doing something together or me trying to help them get television in the United States. But it just didn't work out. You know, they couldn't really quite get their act together uh, to, to do what needed to be done to really go and, and meet with a network like MTV. So it, it it was just a meeting. You know, I showed up. They took pictures of me, you know, sitting there with Jason Hervey. And that got a lot of press. And people just automatically assumed that Jason and I had some kind of vested interest in it. But really, it was just a visit and more exploratory than anything. And according to Teddy Hart, it was actually the idea of one of the camera operators from the 2000s Stampede revival. Teddy's telling of the story is that after he was released from his WWF developmental deal at 18, he decided to start training other kids to wrestle. When these kids started working for Bruce and Ross Hart at Stampede, this cameraman said as a fan he'd rather watch what they were doing, not the slow outdated style of the older roster members. He got some oil and gas investors on board and put together the pilot for Matt Rats. I don't know how true that story is, but does this look like the face of a man that would tell a lie? No matter whose idea it was, clearly this was a great concept. Can't think of any reasons why it's a bad idea. 
So using press releases, show results, show footage, and archived web pages, I hope to present a pretty detailed look back at Mat Rats. The earliest evidence that the promotion was starting up appeared with the launch of the Mat Rats website in February 2001. So WCW is still clinging to life. The only thing featured on the site is a call for extras for the audience. Would you like to be in the audience? Are you energetic and outgoing? Can you dance like you belong on a televised rave? My god, what a 2001 corporate thing to post. Speaking of which, we can see that the website is owned by Digital Artisans Guild Inc. DAG for short. The show with a budget of a supposed $175,000 taped its first two episodes at Calgary's famous Palace Nightclub later on in February. In addition to the Heart Kids, the roster would also feature other teens, including some that would become notable stars, like family friend and future family member TJ Wilson, the incredible Jack Evans, and even Rene Dupree of La Resistance. Matt Ratz was aimed at a target demographic of teens and early 20s, and the roster reflected that demo. All of the talents were between 15 and 21 years old. I believe Teddy Hart was the oldest member of the roster at 21. I don't know if it's because they weren't fully trained yet, or if the edict was that they should only be doing crazy spots, but the show was filled with these kids doing crazy spots. And the ring was designed to really encourage these crazy spots, since the ring posts have these platforms on them to make such dives easier. It reminds me a lot of the old Hasbro WWF rings. While her cousins were competing in the ring, Natty was actually the ring announcer for the show, flanked by other young girls that would scream at the announcement of the competitors. A very TRL-inspired thing to do. All right, we got to get to Lady Marmalade. It's at six, down a couple spots. You're watching TRL in New Orleans and New York and everywhere else. Here are the girls. In March, the website is updated with the description of the show. An exciting new weekly one-hour wrestling slash music show for teenagers, featuring the sons and daughters of third and fourth generation wrestling superstars, as well as other gifted teenage athletes. Matt Rats features music and videos from the latest bands on the market. The site still featured the casting call for audience extras, but now also included a casting call for aspiring wrestlers. Woof, that could have ended badly. Wait, I was 14 at the time. You mean I could have joined Matt Rats? Yeah, no, no, that's a terrible idea. An update in April brings some interesting developments. The site now shows the promotion as NGW, Next Generation Wrestling. I've got to admit, that's a great name for a promotion like this one, filled with young third and fourth generation talents. But it appears the name of the show was still Matt Rats. So like Next Generation Wrestling, Matt Rats. And up here in the corner, we see a logo that may be familiar if you've ever seen I Know What You Did Last Summer. It's the logo for Mandalay Entertainment. So, back in February 2001, Mandalay Sports Entertainment signed a deal with DAG to distribute and market Matt Rats. And guess who's a part of the deal on Mandalay's side? Well, it's Bischoff's production partner, Jason Hervey. According to the press release, DAG anticipates production of 100 plus shows over the next two years with revenues from domestic and international license fees for each show anticipated to be in the $350,000 range. Additionally, the partnership will pursue increased revenue streams through pay-per-view, special event broadcasting, sponsorship, advertising, and wide-reaching internet strategies. April is when the deal is finalized once some other pieces come in and complete the puzzle. Hervey is also quoted as saying that Mandalay have developed not only an appreciation for DAG's target audience, but an understanding of their wants and desires. You can also see that the trailer and match 2 of episode 1 are now available to view. At least they were in April 2001. They may have been using the website for distribution at the start, but they were clearly seeking a television deal. Look, you can even vote for where you want them to end up. Honestly, I'd say UPN. It already looks like something that would have been on UPN at the time. Looking at the trailer created for the show to try to sell it to networks, it looks like the aesthetic of the show was very early 2000s. It really leans heavy into the internet age look. Kids love cyberspace, you see. And of course, they had to make parts of it look like it's a real-time player. Later in April, there's another huge announcement. Eric Bischoff was now officially on board. Well, on the board. Eric joined the board of directors for DAG and was named Executive Vice President of Development for Matt Rats. 
The agreement was supposedly for two years with an option for a third. In the press release, Easy e is quoted saying that Matt Ratz was the most exciting thing I have seen in sports entertainment in 10 years. Bischoff was spotted at a taping a couple weeks prior with Hervey, so I'd say Eric liked what he saw and was strongly supportive of the concept. I believe the taping Eric participated in was also when we're introduced to the commentary team of the newly freed up Joey Styles and Don Callis, along with 2000 Stampede revival Mauro Ranallo. It's obvious these are just kids getting started since none of them have proper gear. I don't believe that was by design, as a story going around online is that Bischoff berated the kids for not having real gear, saying, we gave you money to go get gear, with one young wrestler Pete Wilson responding, no, you didn't. But that's an anonymous story from Reddit, so take it with a grain of salt. The next couple months the promotion lays low until they announce their next event, Rave in the Ring, set to take place July 29th. Gotta get there early, the rave starts at 7. They also seem to be taking suggestions for a new name for the TV show instead of Matt Rats. Dial up that 50k modem and get your suggestions in! August brings some major news. NGW gets very close to a pay-per-view deal. And supposedly a TV deal. The rumored date for the pay-per-view was October 28th, but was pushed back. Reason being, according to VP of DAG Graham Owen, we're really close to a television deal right now. And if we get that television deal, we spend a lot less on advertising the event because television does that for us. It's quite an expensive thing to do otherwise. They allegedly had gotten viewers choice in Canada to agree to air the show. The provider stating that they felt it would appeal to a different demographic of wrestling fan. There was another show in September 2001, and then after that, the trail dies off. The last known update to the website being November 2001. No TV distribution, no pay-per-view, no more website. Matt Ratz was done. In July 2002, Eric Bischoff joined the WWE as the GM of Raw. Not sure if his deal with DAG just kind of ended when Matt Ratz did or what. Matt Ratz had lots of pieces in place to make this show a unique experience and maybe a success. But since we're talking about it with such limited info and footage, you can guess something went wrong. So what happened? Well, obviously, a wrestling show featuring teens wasn't exactly a concept that networks were jumping over each other to get their hands on. It no doubt would have met a lot of criticism and protests from parents' groups. This was around the same time period when the WWF were battling the Parents' Television Council. And the WWF was fully trained adults having matches. Imagine the backlash if a network aired a show featuring kids doing the same thing? If not performing even riskier moves, it would have been insane. There's also the little pesky problem of child labor laws that would have gotten in the way. Definitely a massive headache for any network or production team. So without a home to air Matt Rats, the show failed. Many of the teen wrestlers would only wrestle another couple years after this, if at all. As we saw at the beginning though, a handful would go on to have long, incredibly successful careers. Matt Rats was also where Natty caught the bug for performing in the ring. She admittedly wasn't a great ring announcer and it was at the urging of Jack Evans that Natty hit her first ever wrestling move, a Dragon Rana. After the show, she started official training, and the rest is history. While the Matt Rats idea may have been DOA, I think the concept of a wrestling show that was almost exclusively high-flying action and crazy spots may have had a chance if, you know, it wasn't teenagers. If TNA was just the X Division, or Wrestling Society X without the explosions? Remember Slam Ball? Basketball on trampolines? Something like that, but for wrestling, could have worked at least in the short term. Would it have been great wrestling? Hell no, but it would have been fun to watch. There is some footage uploaded to YouTube going as far back as 2006, so be forewarned about the quality of the footage. I, for one, would love to see the full series released somehow. Whatever you've got, Mandalay or DAG, I want to see it. In 2013, Teddy Hart would relaunch Next Generation Wrestling for what was apparently one eye pay-per-view. Again, the promotion failed one last time. And that's the story of Matt Rats, a very interesting experiment that never stood a chance at working out. I want to thank Sam I Am and No Puns for suggesting Matt Rats. If you've got a suggestion for a future video, drop it in the comments. I'm Scott from WrestleSpective, watch wrestling, love wrestling, 
Thanks for watching.